when we talk about exam findings, you know, L3 nerve uh, compression leads to hip abduction weakness, L4 knee extension weakness with a decreased patella reflex, L5 ankle dorsiflexion and inversion weakness with also EHL weakness. You can also get some hip abduction weakness and then S1 uh, and ankle plantar flexion weakness with a decreased Achilles tendon. So big things here to remember are L5 will give you a foot drop, uh, S1 will classically give you plantar flexion weakness. Again, not written in stone, but you know things to really think about. When you see that person with the uh, foot drop, you really need to think about L5 nerve root compression, whether that's an L5-S1 far lateral disc hitting the L5 nerve root or a L4-5 paracentral disc hitting the traversing L5 nerve root. This is, I'm gonna skip over this because this is just sort of summarizing everything we just talked about. So here we are back to our picture, L5-S1 disc herniation. You can see where, why I say this leads to compression of the traversing nerve root. If you look at, in the axial here, the left side, this is the traversing nerve root right here. You can see that's sort of obliterated on the right side. So ultimately leading to compression of that traversing nerve root. And when we look at this, so this picture, I'm showing you an axial through the disc at L4-5. And this looks relatively normal, maybe a little bit of foraminal stenosis on the left. Here is the classic far lateral disc herniation. You can see the positive arrow sign there on the right. Uh, th these are really easy to miss, miss because we look at the MRI and we wanna look at that central canal and we say, oh, it looks perfect. No nerve root compression, everything looks great person has a really acute radiculopathy. You can see here, this is a relatively large disc herniation and it's pushing on that nerve, kind of right in the reason of the DRG, the dorsal root ganglion, which is a very painful spot to have compression. So uh, really important to look at the whole picture and not miss these far lateral disc herniations. Another example here of a four or five disc herniation, this is a massive disc herniation. You can see in the axial that it just completely obliterates the central canal. This would be a disc herniation that I would, you know, consider uh, cauda equina as a real possibility because this has really completely obliterated the central canal. And this is certainly one that, you know, when we talk about conservative management, this is probably not one you're managing conservatively because this person's probably got some pretty significant symptoms and weakness. That being said, if they fall into that 20% of people that don't have that, maybe this is something that you can manage more conservatively. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.